Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollard. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And welcome as we come together to celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. In today's Gospel, we hear about Thomas who struggled to believe in the risen Jesus. And at times we too struggle in our belief. Let's ask the Lord now for mercy, but most of all for guidance in those times that we do struggle. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people by the hands of the apostles and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high honor, and more than ever believers were added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and pallets, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to Lord. God. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Give, Give praise, praise to the Lord, for he praise is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give, Give praise, praise to, the, to Lord, the Lord, for He is good. His, His mercy, mercy endures forever. 
the stone that the builders rejected, has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, a marvel in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Give praise to the Lord, Lord, for he he is good. good. His His mercy mercy endures forever. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God and has given us light. Give Give praise praise to the Lord, Lord, for he he is good. good. His His mercy mercy endures endures forever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you in Jesus the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance, was on the island called Patmos, on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, saying, Write what you see in a book, and send it to the seven churches. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe, and with a golden sash across his chest. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead, but he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and Hades. Now write what you see, what is and what is to take place hereafter. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. You believed, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Now, Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and place my finger in the mark of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I guess when we are feeling good and we are happy about life, it's easy to allow others to come close to us. But when we are feeling depressed or when we are feeling down, or maybe even when we are in pain, we tend to distance ourselves from others, cut ourselves off. Nobody wants a sore spot to be touched. We want it to be left alone. This is understandable, but how does healing happen if we do not allow our wounds to be seen and touched? At the center of this gospel that we read on the second Sunday of Easter, I think, is a story of healing. At the center of the church's ministry, it seems to me, should be healing. We live in a time where many of us bear wounds of all sorts. Physical wounds, emotional wounds, psychological wounds, spiritual wounds. And Jesus has this incredible ability to understand the seasons of the human heart, especially the needs of the human heart. In today's gospel, we see yet again how Jesus, with his insight into the human heart, becomes a healer, a physical healer, an emotional healer, a psychological and faith healer. Let's put this into context. After the death of Jesus, the disciples scatter. And it seems that Thomas flees just that little bit further from the group of the apostles. The atmosphere is tense. They are afraid. We are told more than once in that gospel, they are locked up in fear of the Jews. They are behind walls. No doubt, it's not just the Jews they are afraid of, but even what is going on within themselves as they live through this period of mourning and loss. Thomas misses the first appearance of Jesus, and he cannot believe the stories that the others tell him. You can't blame him. I'm not sure I would believe people if they came to tell me what Thomas got told. But we need to watch very carefully how Jesus deals with the situation that is tense and is painful. In truth, Jesus is the one that has been pierced. But if we look really closely, we will notice that it is really the disciples may be seen most clearly in Thomas who are wounded. They are wounded by grief. They are wounded by loneliness and disillusionment, doubt and despair. Remember, they had given up everything to follow him, and now he's crucified and gone as far as they are concerned. And Thomas, it seems, in his pain, wanted to be alone. No doubt the others who stayed together in that upper room dealt with their pain in different ways. Perhaps they were bickering amongst themselves in that upper room, being short with each other. You see, each of us has a style when it comes to dealing with our own hurt and pain. The important thing is not that we get hurt or that we struggle. But the important thing is how we deal with our hurt. Do the hurts of our lives taint us so that we land up alone and bitter and twisted? Or do they propel us to seek wellness, to seek healing, to seek wholeness? We see in the Gospels, the disciples, we know are propelled 
forward to seek wholeness and wellness. And in the Acts of the Apostles, we have wonderful accounts of how they also share that with others. We know, on the other hand, that Judas becomes bitter and twisted and cannot find healing. He despairs and eventually he takes his own life. I want to suggest that the scriptures today offer us three valuable invitations or lessons for our own lives. The first one is, notice how Jesus confronts pain and woundedness. Jesus is never afraid to confront pain. Jesus does not hide his wounds. The disciples do by hiding away, by isolating themselves, or even like Thomas, by running away. But Jesus shares his woundedness. Look, he says, at the wounds in my hands and in my side. Sometimes, unfortunately, the world we live in, the culture we live in, maybe makes us feel embarrassed or awkward or less if we are wounded. It's strange that sometimes two people can be going through the same pain and yet they don't know about it because we simply don't confront our pain and our woundedness. We have it in our heads, in our social convention, that pain and, and wounds are a sign of weakness. But notice, not for Jesus, he shares his wounds. He's not afraid to say, look here, look what happened to me. And so too, there's an invitation for us to perhaps dare, have the courage to share our woundedness with others. Now, we don't go around telling everybody, but there are people who we can share the pain of our lives with. There's a second thing I want you to notice. Notice how Jesus knows that woundedness is multidimensional. And we can often forget this when we deal with pain. Ours and the pain of others. It's not just the wound that hurts, but all that goes with it. The relationship, perhaps, that has broken up. The pain of being separated, but also the questions of why or the feeling of rejection. Notice the many different levels of pain. Jesus confronts Thomas's pain. He struggled to believe, but also brings Thomas back into the community. He heals his struggle to believe, but also he heals his isolation and despair. Often, we use the word sorry when people are in pain. And sometimes when we say sorry, it's not enough because pain is multidimensional. And so we have to look at all else that goes with it, that is underneath it, that is behind, that we so often miss out. It's not just about Thomas's belief. And for so long, perhaps, that's what we say in the Christian church. Thomas's struggle to believe. But it is also about Thomas's disillusionment, Thomas's despair, and Thomas's isolation. And Jesus knows that. And notice how he deals with Thomas. And the third and final thing I invite you to notice is that Jesus doesn't just say to these disciples, hey guys, check it out. But rather, he uses his wounds to heal. Imagine again the emotional or the psychological pain of those disciples, even the spiritual and the faith pain of those disciples. Jesus becomes a wounded healer. And he's inviting us too to become wounded healers. You know, often the hurts of our own lives are only healed 
when we are in the presence of another who understands our pain. And that means we dare to share our wounds. Not so that people can have pity on us, but so that together we can offer each other healing. Jesus, the wounded healer, reminds us that our hurts and our wounds can be transformed into a powerful witness for others, just like those disciples. Because go and read what happens after these encounters with Jesus. They suddenly go out and proclaim the good news to others. The whole book of Acts that we read in this Easter season is about that proclamation of good news. They, for many generations, help others who struggle with pain and with faith. What is the real meaning of the resurrection? We can say many theological things about the resurrection, but perhaps first and foremost, this Sunday reminds us that the resurrection is about not being afraid to confront our woundedness in its multidimensional forms so that we can truly become wounded healers for one another. Because that indeed is what the resurrection does. It brings us to wellness and to wholeness. And if we can't find that wellness and wholeness, if there is nobody to offer us that wellness and wholeness, we perhaps need to ask, how deep has the message of the resurrection settled in our own hearts? Let's join in praying together now the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's now bring our needs, and especially our woundedness and the woundedness of our world, to the Lord in prayer. For all Christians, that like St. Thomas, we may acknowledge Jesus as our Lord and God and show others by the witness of our lives that our faith is real. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For healing, that we should be willing to confront the wounds of life in ourselves and others, and seek the healing that only the Lord can offer for hearts, minds, and bodies. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For world leaders, that they would seriously persevere in efforts to make a peace and justice and a reality in our world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are living in the darkness and doubt and unbelief, that the faith and good and loving deeds of Christians may lead them to Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For us gathered to pray, that by praying together, wherever we are, we may support one another in the journey of faith and grow close to God, who draws us together. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. 
For those whose lives have been ripped apart by the evil of war, especially in Ukraine and northern Mozambique, that they may find the healing that they need as they confront their misery, pain, and loss. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. In the silence of our hearts, we bring our prayers before the risen Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, these are our prayers that we make in faith through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth, work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of our holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts. And they sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. 
For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Buti, our Bishop, and all the clergy, and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have praised you throughout, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let's join in praying together now in the very words that the Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's take a moment to offer those around us a sign of God's peace. If you're alone, simply at this time, just pray for peace in your own heart and in our world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defined spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you 
giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.